Welcome back to Jason Bowman Loves Cars. I'm Jason Bowman, and I love cars. Today I'm going to tell you my story of the N.A. Miata. I hope you enjoy it. I was 15 years old when the Miata came out. To be honest, at the time I was a little indifferent. I was obsessed with the Dash Mustang at the time. Dash was like the Canadian equivalent of the Saline, which I was also obsessed with. There was some interest as evidence of my actual film camera 1992-ish auto show photos. Fast forward to 2021 and my interest in the N.A. Miata is much greater. The original Miata was built in the golden age of Japanese cars, and unlike many of the 90s hero cars, you don't have to be filthy rich to buy one. American auto journalist Bob Hall came up with the idea for the Miata in the late 70s. He was upset by the demise of the classic British sports car. Bob was an unofficial outside advisor for Mazda at the time. During a meeting with the Mazda's R&D department head, Bob picked up a piece of chalk and drew a generic roadster. The simple sketch must have stuck with Mazda as a few years later they hired Bob Hall to their product planning and design team. Bob worked closely with two like-minded car enthusiasts within Mazda. And... An internal memo entitled, What is a sports car for an American? The cliff notes were, and I quote, it has to feel faster than it is without being fast in absolute terms. The appearance, the first impression, are obvious things to make a sports car, but there are also a couple of intangibles beyond the image, related to the character of the car and its personality to make the car a cult object with loyal enthusiasm, as happened with the Lotus Elan or the MG. Most successful sports cars in the United States had always been convertibles, Hi, I'm Jackie McLaren. Please remember to like and subscribe and comment to Jason Bowman Loves Cars. The second generation of Japanese sports cars like the 300ZX and the RX-7 were moving upscale, leaving a sales opportunity for inexpensive sports cars. Receive the memo and arrange for... To go for a rip in the mountains around... in a Triumph Spitfire. He is one of us. After terrorizing the mountain passes, he came back a believer in the lightweight sports car idea. Mazda toyed with front-wheel drive and mid-engine designs. The front-wheel drive was deemed too common to be iconic, and the Pontiac Fiero and Toyota MR2 were crowding the small niche market for mid-engine sports cars. It was decided that the Miata was to be front-engine rear-wheel drive as Jesus Carburetor had intended. The prototype was internally called the V705. It was vigorously tested and compared to the Toyota MR2, Fiat X19, RX7, and the actual Triumph Spitfire in California and in the UK. Mazda always feels the need to inflict their design philosophy hokum on the public. This round, the Miata philosophy was... Which translates to, fuck and the horse you rode in on. Oh wait, that's not right. Actually, it refers to the synthesis of rider and horse to feel as one. The Miata was unveiled at the Chicago Auto Show February 10th, 1989 with a US sticker price of $13,995. The NA Miata hit Canadian and American showrooms in May 1989 as a 1990 model. The body of the NA was made from steel with an aluminum hood. The lightweight sports car came in in a little. The lightweight sports car came in at only 2,160 pounds. The slippery shape had a drag coefficient of 0 0.38. Double wishbone suspension was found on all four corners with front and rear anti-sway bars. The front was equipped with vented disc brakes and the rear had solid rear disc brakes. The base car had steel wheels borrowed from the Mazda Protégé. Optional mini light slash Wantanabe looking alloys were also available. The early Miata came standard with a manual transmission and a 1.6 liter dual overhead cam inline four cylinder engine. The engine made 115 horsepower at 6,500 RPM and 100 foot pounds of torque at 5,500 RPM. The engine was managed with a vane type airflow meter and an electronic fuel injection system. The 1.6 liter also had distributorless electronic ignition. The engine was code named B6ZE. RS. It was specifically designed for the Miata and featured a lightened crankshaft flywheel and aluminum oil pan with cooling fins. When the sacrilegious automatic transmission was optioned, the engine was tuned to have 100 foot-pounds of torque at a lower 4,000 RPM. 
This torque band complemented the auto-tragic transmission. The revised calibration reduced horsepower to 105 horsepower at 6500 RPM. The 5-speed manual transmission was based on the unit found in the Mazda 929. The design of the gear shifter was closely scrutinized during development. The engineers were tasked to make the throws to be as short and effortless as possible. An optional viscous limited slip differential was available on the manual transmission cars. The advertised introductory base price cars were stripper models featuring stereo delete, no air conditioning, wheel wheels, manual transmission, and steering. Air conditioning, power steering, and stereo. Air conditioning, power steering, and stereo were added as standard equipment in the later years. In 1993, 1500 <coughs> people coughed. In 1993, 1500 limited edition cars were built. The limited edition featured red leather interior, leather wrapped steering wheel, nardy shift knob, upgraded stereo, cruise control, limited slip differential, power windows, mirrors, and steering, air conditioning, BBS wheels, Bilstein shocks, front and rear spoilers, ABS brakes, stainless sill plates, and Harley style peanut tank door speaker trim. All 1993 LE cars came in black. 1994's got a refresh with the introduction of the more powerful 1.8 liter BPZE engine. A redesigned dashboard came with dual airbags. A Mazda emblem was added to the front bumper cover. Substantial bracing was added to the chassis to meet new side impact standards. Laguna Blue Mica paint was only available in 1984 and 1985, making these cars rare and collectible. The R package was introduced in 1994, featuring Bilstein shocks, stiffer sway bars, special spring rates, trunk lid spoiler, lower rear skirt, and front chin spoiler, and a Torsen LSD. AC was optional, but the R package was not available with other amenities like power steering, leather, or an auto tragic transmission. The new 1.8 liter engine produced 109 horsepower at 6,500 RPM and 110 foot-pounds of torque at 5,500 RPM, which was then increased to 133 horsepower at 6,500 RPM and 114 foot-pounds of torque at 5,500 RPM for the 1996 model year. The base weight increased to 2,180 pounds. Stock performance. MotorWeek tested the 1990 Miata. It did 0 to 60 in 10 seconds the quarter mile in 17.5 at 80 miles an hour. MotorWeek also tested a 1995 Miata M edition in the... Uh, <laughs> MotorWeek also tested a 1995 Miata M edition. It ran 0-60 to 60 in 8.4 and did the quarter mile in 16.4 at 87 miles an hour. Aftermarket performance. The aftermarket is limitless for the Miata. Header. Intake, cap back exhaust system, adjustable cam sprockets, turbo kit, supercharger kit, stroker kits, performance handling and braking. Performance handling and braking goodies for the Miata are also limitless. Lowering springs, coilovers, thicker stabilizer bars, poly bushing kits, chassis braces, adjustable control arms, racing. Miatas have been raced in every venue imaginable, starting with the obvious, autocross. As a right-hander after a sharp little hook to the left, following the first straightaway. You'll see the first red Miata takes a wide line, the silver Miata takes sort of a medium to inside line, and the green Miata finds a nice balance, smooth and fast. Drag racing. Better stop. Oh, it's close. And now he's going. Oh, bugger. Bye bye. That was super close. Oh, Phil, I love you so much! Wow, that Miata took that Miata to Gapplebee's.
Miatas are naturally road raced. All that. Tyler Casera in the 44 jumping out of line there, making a nice move, passing the 74 car of Reynolds, picking up a couple of spots. The 87 on the move as well. That's Seth Rollian, who started in 10th position out of Miami. He has gained ground here in the early going. Miatas make great drift missiles. <laughs> is coming. Rally crossing a Miata is more popular than you would expect. Nothing beats driving one down a curvy country road on a summer's day. Hey, wait, what was that? Holy crap, another jackalope sighting! Run. Buying a Miata. Miatas are pretty bulletproof mechanically and electrically. The Tin Worm is the Miata's worst enemy, though. The worst rust area is in the rocker panel in front of the rear wheel. There is a drain at the base of the rocker that easily gets clogged with debris. The built-up debris and water eventually rust out this area. There is a matching rust area behind the front wheel with another easily debris-clogged drain. Another source of rust is caused by worn trunk seals that cause water to pool in the well that the jack is located in. Notable less common areas are the door sills and the door lip areas. The frame rails are close to the ground and speed bumps and other road irregularities can scrape the protective coating off the frame rails and cause them to rust too. The foot wells can hold water so it's a good idea to check under the carpet for rust. The shelf behind the seat and the gas tank cover tend to rust if the top is leaking so inspect this area carefully. The last place to look is under the brake booster. Brake fluid tends to eat the paint off under the booster, leaving it vulnerable to the tin worm. Haggerty claims the average value of a 1990 Mazda Miata base to be $10,500. They also claim the average value of a 1997 Miata base to be $12,700. Values are on the rise, so get your NA soon before they become unobtainium like the rest of the 90s Halo cars. Thanks for watching Jason Bowman Loves Cars. I hope you enjoyed my story of the N.A. Miata. See you next time.